Hey everyone and welcome to another What Sold on eBay video for you today. I am Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler. 30 years over reselling experience. Hope everyone is having an amazing day. It is Friday the 13th, so don't be afraid, don't be scared, all that kind of stuff. Even though, even though it's a full moon today, which uh, by the way doesn't happen for another 20 something years. I think 2049 we're going to see another full moon on uh, Friday the 13th, so it is also a harvest moon and all that funky stuff that no one cares about. But anyways, uh, don't walk under any ladders or whatever that kind of funky <laughs> stuff is. Uh, for those that are new to the channel, definitely go down there and click the subscribe button if you want to learn about different things to look out for to sell on eBay. I am Chris, the manager here, the hub manager for the American Cancer Society. I run their eBay page listings and stuff like that. It's a really awesome job. Uh, proceeds go to cancer research, rides, housing, wigs, a lot of great stuff. So uh, I've pretty much came full circle here in my reselling career doing this professionally for uh, a major charity, which I'm very, very stoked about and humbled. And um, I wake up every day uh, loving what I do. So, you know, there's that. And if you enjoy that, definitely go down there and click the like button. And uh, let's get right into the show today. Uh, first up, we have this Mike and Alley designer bathroom tissue box cover. Uh, we did take a best offer, I want to say, for like 30-something or 40-something on this. I uh, apologize for not having the exact numbers. Uh, but Mike and Alley is a brand that you should probably look out for. You'll probably find this stuff in estate sales, uh, possibly some garage sales and things like that. The thrift stores, you know, maybe... Um, there's a lot of this kind of stuff that you find in, in thrift stores every time, every once in a while. But I would say probably the majority of this stuff is going to be found in garage sales or estate sales. And this is kind of like a, a I want to say like a higher end bathroom type thing. But um, indeed, you know, you can definitely find these, um, you know, and this is a Bolo brand for sure. If you've never heard of this, definitely uh, look up Mike and Alley bathroom. I guess that's the keyword. And like I said, uh, there's no there's no discernible marks other than this kind of like sticker which could come off sometimes. And uh, don't don't be like say like if you see anything Mike and Alley, oh my God, it's gonna be worth a ton of money because it's not. There's some of there's some of the stuff that doesn't really go for that much, but there's some sets that you know go for over a hundred dollars. There's some waste baskets that go into the two and three hundred dollar range so it's one of those things where you've probably never heard of this brand before especially if you're a guy, a guy like me i've never heard of this brand before uh maybe if you're in the home decor you've probably heard of this brand but for for me i, I haven't heard of this brand at all so uh there's definitely that so this is a definitely a bolo brand to look out for especially if you're out there sourcing and just to just to make sure the condition is is okay because some of some of their stuff is white on white so that stuff gets scuffed and marked very easily uh, you want to pick up pieces that are in mint condition unless it's one of those crazy higher end waste baskets that you see and you can go to ebay and and and, and definitely look at that to see uh, if that for sure uh, we got maui delights in the house how you doing maui delights i'm having a great friday uh just trying to catch up on all the what sold stuff i have literally dozens and dozens of listings to talk about uh not today but we're going to stretch that out i'm going to try to do three shows a week next week uh, for this to try to catch up because we're way behind and there's lots of stuff to talk about so uh, if you guys are joining the program definitely click the like button leave a comment uh let's talk in chat if you have any questions leave them in chat and for those walk watching on the back end if you have any questions on any of this stuff as a matter of fact we have three deep dives today we're going to talk about worth point uh some three deep dives on some items today so you definitely want to watch the whole video all the way through so we can uh, get you some important knowledge so you can learn more to earn more which is definitely the logo slogan slash all that kind of stuff here on this channel uh, next up we have this vintage camera lot this sold for $9.99 the only reason why I'm showing this I don't really kind of show the lower end stuff though I'm trying to work with um, doing you know more higher end stuff with the the cost per listing or the cost per sale or the C what is it the C C something or another uh, the cost per sale the average trying to you know uh, bump that up and so we're going to be doing more higher end stuff but the reason why i'm showing you this camera lot is a lot of people think like when they see vintage cameras uh, they're worth a ton of money now you would look at these and think they're valuable 
and you know I've got in that trap too but you know there's a lot of vintage cameras that aren't worth really much they look cool and they're great for decor so if you have a home or a studio or something like that you can get these for relatively cheap uh, so the main reason why I'm showing you guys this stuff is that you know look every camera up that you find because you never know there are some gems out there just like every subject every brand there's going to be some sort of thing to look out for with vintage cameras just if you see them just don't know like oh these are trash uh, for the most part like 80 percent of them are garbage and what i mean by that is the resale value isn't really cool they look cool and they seem cool uh, even some of the lenses on these things could be worth way more than the cameras themselves so definitely look at the lenses these happen to be uh, movie cameras the two ones on the left there and uh, the one in the center is a it's kind of a weird slide camera it takes larger format and uh, I think the one with the crazy flash thing right there the dog dish I guess you'd call it um, but just to be just to be sure just whenever you're looking at old cameras look up look them up because they, like I said there are some really good ones out there and if they have like lenses attached to them look up the lenses because some of the lenses could actually go for a crazy amount of money uh, if you ever see a lens that says Carl Zeiss on it, and that's a pro tip, definitely look into that. Most Carl Zeiss lenses are instant pickups. I mean, don't even ask questions. Just buy the camera, especially if it says Carl Zeiss anywhere. And it that goes for like any anything, uh, binoculars, lenses, telescopes, anything that has a Carl Zeiss lens glass is uh, something that's very high, highly desirable. And as a matter of fact, we're probably going to do. Uh, um, a Patreon video on the Carl Zeiss stuff uh, pretty soon, maybe even next week. So uh, definitely appreciate the people that are supporting uh, the channel on that. But we can just kind of take a step through these real quick. As you can see here, these two are movie cameras, and sometimes you know the lenses could be swapped in and out. Uh, the one on the far left over there has three different types of lenses, and you just basically turn the knob to kind of get you know your telephoto, your macro, and your wide-angle lens. This Kodak one right here. Uh, as we could see here, this is a Rook. I think that's how you say it, Rook, Rook, and uh, that's a really cool one. And like I said, it's hard to even test these things if you're going to find them. So if you're ever listing these, another pro tip is just to put that they're uh, untested for parts and repair, just to just to be sure. Even if you're not sure, uh, if you're a camera person, you know how to check all this stuff. You know, for me, I'll check the if it winds, if it clicks, if the timers work, if the ISO shutter speed is correct the timer usually because there's timers on these old cameras and like I said I'm gonna do a camera video uh, at some point as a matter of fact I have the cameras put this side I have all the video equipment now so um, um, yeah so definitely expect a, a camera video at some point I've kind of rattled off a little bit uh, on this one uh, we got land shark picker in the house how you doing we got pearl is precious how you doing I hope everyone is having an amazing Friday the 13th uh, so far uh, we got lots of bolos, so uh, definitely stay tuned. We got lots of stuff t coming up right now. Uh, speaking of which, we have this large 1941 Pyrex. This is a glass insulator. Now, what's crazy is when I first saw this, this thing's huge. It's 10 inches in diameter. And uh, when I first saw this, I thought it was like a, a, a lid to like a Pyrex like dish or something like that. But then, you know, once I did research, I found out this was an insulator. And basically, for those that don't know, basically a long time ago before they came out with new um, materials and technology, and I could probably say there's probably some glass insulators still being used, just, you know, newer ones. Uh, this is basically goes up on electric poles. I, know, I don't know the exact technical thing why these are even there. Um, of course, it's an insulator, so it's insulating something, you know, maybe heat, electricity, all that kind of stuff. But anyways, these these go on telephone poles. That's the probably the the, <laughs> the dumbed down version without the technical knowledge. And if you know anything about these, leave a comment in the below. Uh, if you know exactly, you know, I can go and Google it real quick and see exactly what these do. But I know what they are. And for the most part, you know, you're going to find the little tiny blue cup ones. And uh, that's actually another video in itself about the insulators. But as you can see here, there's going to have some... Uh, there was a date on the side and, of course, a molded patent thing that said Pyrex. These actually go for a pretty good amount of money. So if you ever see these out there and you think they're possibly like a dish lid like I did, uh, they're out there. I think we actually took a best offer for 80-something on this. And that's about the wheelhouse that the Pyrex old ones go for, you know, between 60 to to $100 in that wheelhouse. And just like I said, you know, with glass, 
make sure there's no chips or anything cracks. These things are pretty heavy duty, so finding these things cracked or chipped, though it happens, you know, these things get dropped and stuff like that. But just like if you're ever going to buy these and you're going to pay up, just make sure that the, you know, that they're not all chipped up and, and that they're not all screwed up. And uh, like I said, there's the, the other little ones that, you know, basically are blue that everyone pretty much knows about. So, um, you know, definitely look out for those. And, you know, the purple ones and the funkier color ones of those are the ones that go for a lot of money. So, uh, anyways, uh, like I said, I never knew these existed. I knew about the little tiny cup uh, insulators, but I never knew that there's super large ones like this. And this thing ha actually had some pretty good weight, and I wish I could remember uh, what weight it had on here but it was pretty it was substantial weight i would say it was like between three and four pounds maybe if i was to guess uh, the thing was pretty chunky so uh, anyways just definitely uh keep an eye out for this kind of stuff because you never know uh, when you're going to see uh, an insulator like this uh, next up we have some 1980s viewmaster this is a submarine this is actually what this one is called a submarine blue even though it's not called submarine as far as like the Viewmaster, but the, what do you call it? The, I guess the collectors or, or something have, have called this the submarine uh, one. This is what it looks like. Now it was brand new uh, in the package. Just the package happened to be open. And so uh, I actually wouldn't call it brand new. It was in mint condition. We'll say that like new is kind of a stretch because this thing was opened. So therefore, but it was in mint condition. Uh, it probably was just used a few times. And there's our shop if you want to come visit. But anyways, I thought this would actually go for a lot more money. As a matter of fact, in hindsight, um, we probably should have just sold the 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 reels in the in the packages by themselves, and then sold the viewer by themselves. We probably could have stretched out maybe maybe twenty dollars more, thirty dollars more if we if we sold it th that way. Because um, we did take a best offer for this, and I forget exactly how much it was, but it was a it was below the seventy four ninety nine. Um, I actually tried to get $100 for this when it first was listed because I thought, you know, the submarine viewer is actually pretty rare. But not rare enough where, you know, collectors are going to pay up on these. Uh, there are some really old Viewmasters to look out for, especially the black one from the 30s. And it doesn't it doesn't look like a traditional Viewmaster. And, uh, yeah, I had my notebook here. I should actually write that down. That would be another great video. Uh, to do down the road because like I said what we sold those view those old view masters before for over a hundred dollars and uh, the very specific ones to look out for so uh, view master stuff uh, still sells for sure so definitely uh, keep an eye out for that stuff especially you know if you want if you come across a collection you know from the 50s or stuff some of the actual reels go for a pretty good amount of money loose so uh, there are some very rare ones out there but it's one of those things where you have to look them up in each view uh real the old ones i'm gonna see if it shows it actually here uh the vintage ones will have a number in the middle I, this one actually has it but i can't zoom in in the very center where the hole is on these reels there's a number and the vintage ones have them too and that's like the thing to look up so you know it'll say like arizona 554 or something like that so um for the vintage ones the lower the number the older it is for the vintage ones that I've seen. So just remember that the lower the number, the better on especially the vintage ones and the ones that have the blue. Like I said, I should probably do a whole video on that because it's it's a lot to go into, especially with Viewmaster stuff. And people come across this stuff, you know, every once in a while, um, especially the, the vintage stuff is still out there. We, we get this stuff donated every once in a while. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have two lots of these things that have been donated this year that I haven't really got to to, to kind of dissect them. So, like I said, this stuff's out there, and this is totally garage sale stuff, totally estate sale stuff. Um, if you do find these at, you know, thrift stores, they're probably going to be all bagged up in, in a clear bag or something like that. So, and, uh, you know, don't pay up on these if you're going to Goodwill and you see a whole bunch of this. You just got to know what you're looking for because that's the key uh, for these things because, you, you know, you don't want to you don't want to pay a crazy uh, amount of money for that for sure. Uh, next up, we have this Oriental Chinese Rooster. This is a marble seal stamp wax thing, marble thing. Uh, for those that don't know, you know, it basically, you know, you can take some wax. And, and for those that are familiar with, like, the very old uh, kind of, like, Renaissance movies and things like that where they they stamp their letters with the, with the stamp, with the seal, 
uh, the wax seal so that you can't open it. So it's kind of like a, a security measure so you know if someone's opened or tampered your letter. That's what this is for. Um, these things are actually pretty rare to find, like some of the very old ones. This is a newer one. This sold for $19.99. And uh, the reason why I'm showing you this is we're going to go a deep dive on these. Some of the very older ones go for a crazy amount of money, as we can see here. You know, $1,300, $1,200, 1000 and uh, when you look at these and you compare it to the one that I sold, so like, let's show you right here. So if you look at this, you know, it looks kind of newer, but when you look at some of these like kind of older ones, you can just tell like by looking at them that there's something special about them. And it's one of those things. So if you do see these, uh, you're probably going to find most likely find these at estate sales than anything else, though I can probably you know you might be able to find these at a garage sale or something like that but this is a this is a state sale uh, type of item for sure and there's all different types of them you know there's jade one and there's also uh you know i guess it's shushan so stone oh that's a sally sold the seashells by the seashore type thing there as you can see here but definitely look out for these and like i said you know do your research on these I, i'm i'm very weak at chinese art and it's a it's an up and coming um niche right now especially vases and plates and things like that it's very up and coming even stamps and postcards you know hong kong that stuff is very hot right now because right now you know the chinese people um are starting to um you know there, there's a lot of business people that they, they have a lot of money now and they're starting to kind of rebuild their culture not not rebuild their culture they're kind of buying their memories from their culture and there's so there's a whole thing about chinese art that's super hot right now so um, these are one of those things that when I looked out before, I would totally pass up. And it's definitely one of those things to uh, look out for, for sure. So um, these kind of seal stamp things are the things to look out for. But anyways, like I said, this wasn't a super rare one, but we sold this one for $19.99. This was a newer one. So uh, the, the key is basically if you ever find these to, to, to contact someone who... Uh, like a antique dealer or someone that knows about this kind of stuff. There's actually a few YouTube people uh, that specialize in um, Chinese art and auctions and things like that. And I wish I remembered their name, but I actually am subscribed to one guy. And, you know, he, someone like that, you know, if you can contact them and show them, because you never know what you can have. You can have like a bowl that's worth $100,000 and not even realize it, uh, which has happened before in the past. You always see these stories about people buying Chinese bowls at garage sales and they're worth a crazy amount of money so just uh like i said this is one of those bolo items to to do your research on if you especially come across them uh, there's a lot of knockoffs and i don't mean by knockoffs i mean like just like stuff that was produced in mass in the 50s and the 60s when uh you know the kind of nixon or opened up the orient actually that was the 50s or the 70s and so like the, you know the made in china thing became very prevalent so when you see made in china that's a pretty good red flag to know that it's really not worth a lot. But, you know, some of this older stuff that, you know, definitely do the research. And like you said, you know, Jade, all this kind of other stuff. Is it? It's like Shushan, Shushan, Shushan Stone. I have to definitely go and look at that. Uh, next up, we have another deep dive for you. We're going to talk about retro mid-century bar glasses. Now, uh, this stuff that you can easily find at garage sales and estate sales, especially estate sales. People are older. They have this kind of stuff. And what it is is stuff that came out basically uh, mid-century says what, it's, what it means, you know, 50s, 60s type uh, barware. As we can see here, uh, this one is a set of six with, uh, I think that's called a pitcher yeah, or mixer. I don't know exactly. the. There's probably a, a proper term for that center thing. And if you know it, definitely... Uh, leave a comment below and it came with a stir stick which is usually hard to find those things in intact in because those things are the first things uh, there it is that usually break you know is that stir stick authentic to the to the piece I don't know this came all together so you know you assume that the stir stick came with this and uh, 60s and 50s barware is super hot right now so definitely look out for those and we'll take a little dip into uh, barware here on worth point as you can see here there's some glasses $175 $180 uh, there's a shaker 175 here's some gilded cat 22 karat cocktail glasses here's a little tiny shot glasses here's another one right here 
So definitely look out for these, you know, like this kind of thing right here would be totally obvious if you saw something like this, you know, to kind of double check. Um, and, you know, if you can get away with finding, you know, buying these sets for like $20, $30, as you can see here, $149 is sold for. Now the, now the thing is, I try to stay away from this kind of stuff unless it's super high end because shipping this stuff is a nightmare just let me tell you like shipping glass in general especially sets is a nightmare so just make it worth your while if you're getting the stuff for super cheap then it's probably worth you know shipping it well and all that kind of stuff but sometimes you know some of these things that they're selling for 30 or 40 dollars a set it's not even worth your trouble um as you can see here there's a lot of these kind of bar stands and uh, these kind of <clears throat> these kind of like glass uh, stands and things still go for and this stuff you can see in estate sales and they're kind of usually pushed to the corner and things like that and you can go I guess super high end with these wooden ones but definitely look out for the glasses uh, the sets they usually come in sixes so you know six eight twelve um, kind of stuff like that as you can see this one's eight they they definitely come in even numbers so if you're if you're see a set of five <laughs> or a set of three or seven or something like that it usually tells you that it's missing a, a, a glass so that's definitely a pro tip right there for sure uh, so yeah that's a that's definitely a deep dive and something to look out for uh, next up we have uh, this is going to be also a deep dive with worth points so just hold on tight there uh, as a matter of fact if you are enjoying this definitely click the like button uh, next up is this vintage Gillette adjustable safety razor we've talked about this stuff before this only sold for $9.99 and uh, this isn't one of the super rare ones. There are some rare ones out there, as we can see here. Did I take a photo of the thing? Yeah, that's the, the inside of it. Um, let's see if I was clever enough. No, maybe I just couldn't get the angle right. In the inside there, there's usually a, a patent number, and those are usually what people go off of. Also, inside of the shaft here on some of them, if you unscrew them, it's that little back piece unscrews, and there's usually numbers too inside there. Some of these are actually worth a ton of money. So this, even though this sold for $9.99, the main point is to like look out for this. Now, you've, if you've watched YouTube videos before, <clears throat> you've heard me, you've heard a million people talk about, you know, going into estate sales and looking in the bathroom for this kind of stuff because usually this stuff is, uh, the bathroom's probably one of the most neglected areas uh, in an estate sale because people think it's just bathroom. There's just cleaners and toilet paper and you know stuff that no one wants but there's lots of stuff there's lots of things uh, definitely look out for so uh, let's take a little dip, bit of a deep dive here as you can see here the 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 king of all Gillette razors is the fat boy uh, like I said some mint condition ones have sold for over a thousand dollars now here's the thing you look out for uh, the fat boy is the one that I think is the only one that has this kind of adjustable knob on the top you see how that's got that that number nine and we can kind of step through these a little bit to show you exactly what it looks like. Now that's the key is that knob uh, that's on the top right there. Uh, look out for those ones. If you find those ones, those are the ones you definitely buy. Uh, and even if you even pay up on them if you can, if like someone's asking like $50 or $40 for that, and you might think, God, for a razor, that seems like a lot of money. But as you can see here, it might be worth your while. Even if you can find these for $100 or so, uh, and even here's a pro tip too. If you if you if you're a lot sniper, you can even like go and search in all your different types of places. You go look Facebook Marketplace even to go look for people that are selling like collections and they don't know what they have. You might be able to thought, spot a fat boy uh, in their collection and stuff like that. And that's just Gillette. There's other razors. There's other vintage razors right here. As you can see, some of the, some of the ones are uh, in pretty good condition. Even some of the ones that aren't the fat boy. Um, are ones to look out for. Now, let me see if actually one of these have a photo of the the number that I was talking about. There's that. There's like specific numbers that you can look out for these. And every time I wrist, I uh, know that's a fat boy too. It's got the the adjustable number. There's numbers on the back side of here, and then sometimes inside that shaft is numbers. Because every time I've listed a razor, I always get razor people messaging me on eBay telling me about all kinds of stuff so you know I really appreciate that because you know when I first started listing these I didn't really know exactly what was going on so this is definitely uh, one of those things to look out for I uh, hope uh, everyone is having an amazing day we got Mary McQueen in the house so if you're new to the channel definitely click the subscribe button we want to give a huge shout out to all the patreons who support the channel we have a, another video coming out 
uh, very so soon. We just posted a, a Know Your Stuff video on tripods. So uh, if you're definitely thinking about going to the Patreon, the link is below. Uh, you're going to get more, a lot more stuff here than YouTube because YouTube... Um, YouTube has just been, uh, I don't know what, the algorithm it just doesn't like me. And so uh, I have a lot of great information, so definitely go over there to the Patreon and check that out. And uh, we're going to get even more information. So uh, once again, I'm Chris with Shop Hustler. Hope you had a, a great day. Hope you have a great weekend. Good luck sourcing tomorrow if you're going to go out there. And uh, hopefully some of these items you'll find. And like I said, uh, the more you learn, the more you earn. And I'll see you next time. Take care.